Okay. Last week, we started a topic um, that, that just to the, the best that I can discern, that a, a, a bit of an emphasis, I'll just say it that way, an, an emphasis that I think maybe uh, I, I want to spend some time on for us this year is an em- emphasis, and I, I want to just flesh it out a little bit more because I realize that, that when you say things, sometimes uh, it can mean something different um, just by the way people hear something. And so I just want to flesh out. Uh, last week I said I want us to pay attention to our roots. Um, <clears throat> and I tried to flesh that out a little bit, but just for the sake of clarity. So I'll give you an example. My wife grew up Nazarene. She, she was a part of the Nazarene denomination. I grew up in the Assemblies of God denomination. So when I'm saying that we need to uh, pay attention to our roots, What I'm not suggesting is for Durette to become Nazarene again and for me to become Assembly of God again. Okay, I I don't mean it like that. I'm not talking about returning to cultural roots either. What I'm talking about is I'm, and, and, and maybe I'll give an example that can really be helpful for the image that I'm trying to portray, is to pay attention to our root system in God. How healthy is it? How robust is it? Are they deep? Could they be deeper? Could they change? And anybody that's ever, you know, uh, ever gone to a, an agronomy, um, oh, what do you, you know, you go into a deal and there's a bunch of vendors. What do you call that? An agronomy fair, something. Where they talk about plants. Um, this will maybe be helpful in what I'm trying to portray. So I'll use an alfalfa plant. Um, an alfalfa plant above ground, uh, when it reaches its maturity, uh, in other words, if it's not harvested for, for uh, hay or for forage, uh, uh, an alfalfa plant will grow to a certain spot. It'll flower, a beautiful purple flower. And then after it's flowered, bees will, you know, pollinate and then it'll produce uh, seeds. And then, then the seeds will begin to wait the Weight the stems down a little bit, but, but the plant overall is going to be probably about this tall, probably about this big around, one plant. And that's what you see, okay? But below the ground, you're going to find that its root system is at least three times larger than that. So think about that. Here, here's what you see, and all you farmers out there, I'm, I'm pretty close, right? That it's like this. But underground, it's like, you know, huge, hugely deep. And every plant has what's called a genetic potential. If you're taking notes, write down vision. Uh, Genetic potential. So that when a farmer or a gardener plants a plant, every plant, every variety has what's called a genetic potential to it. So if it's a particular variety of corn, the genetic potential of that variety of corn is to yield X amount of bushels per acre. Are you tracking with me so far? That this variety can produce, I'll just pull out a number, 200 bushel per acre. I don't even, I don't grow corn, so I don't even know if that's close. It's probably not. It's probably bigger than that, but it doesn't matter. This is just an analogy, and an analogy will break down at some point in time. I'm just saying, all right. So the genetic potential of that corn plant is uh, 200 bushel per acre. So that farmer goes, buys that variety and plants it in their field, does whatever's necessary to, to get it planted, get it growing, keep it growing, blah, blah, blah. And then somewhere around in the end of September, October-ish, they go in to yield or to harvest that corn And when they get the harvest report back, what do you think would happen if they produced 100 bushel per acre? What would the farmer do? (laughs) Cry. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Complain. Yep. The farmer may even then go, so well, I just got bad seed. Which that... That could be a possibility, but let's pretend that that's not a possibility. 
The idea is, is that the plant never reached its genetic potential, so something has to change, correct? Where would the biggest change come from? From the farmer. What's our soil health? Okay, let's, let's get in and find out what our soil health is, okay? Did, did we water it correctly? Did we, did we amend the soil in, in a way that helped it or hindered it? One of the first years that I grew a, um, a fufu green crop, um, I watered it too much. Uh, the field guys came out and looked at it and said, you are going to, you are going to hit a home run. This is the best, this is the best. Supposedly this wheat was found from, was found in, in uh, one of the King Tut's sort of a deal. So it's a fufu wheat. It was this tall. The fronds of wheat touched me right at my nose. It was the, it was the most beautiful field. Problem was, is when we, when we harvested it, puny, puny harvest. So it was a Popeye. It was a Popeye deal. It had great forearms, but no guts. Uh, and it was my fault. It was nobody else's fault. It was my fault. So maybe I could, maybe I could you know, in my defense, um, I'd never grown it before, so I just keep it watered. Well, I blew it. Regardless, the genetic potential for a believer, I want to, make this jump here. What, what do you think the genetic potential for a believer is? Let me ask it another way. What should it be? This is a good question. And if you're beginning to answer it, well, I want my genetic potential to be, I want to I want to make this much money. I want to have a house this big. I want to do this. I want to do that. Da, 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 da. Then I'm just telling you, you're going down the wrong road. The genetic potential for a believer is to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. That's our genetic potential. Anything less than that, we've missed the mark. Are you with me? So vision is important when it comes to this thing of paying attention to our root system because what I want to talk about is, is, is eventually three things. I'll mention, mention them to you now and you'll see them come up as we discuss this week and next week. But vision is important. What am I, what, what's my potential? What, what should I look like? What, what should my life at the end of, of this thing called life, what do I want my life to look like? and can it look that way? So people that are growing different varieties of, of plants, whatever it may be, you could be a tomato plant. And the genetic potential of this tomato plant is one plant is able to probably produce X amount of pounds of tomatoes. The tomatoes are going to be approximately within this size range and blah, 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 blah. Their capability on the end once they're harvested is yik, yik, yik. And, and so you grow it and you realize that it, ooh, well, my tomatoes are half the size, didn't produce nearly as much. It didn't all, we automatically didn't just have to go, okay, what do I need to, need to do to change things? So I have a question for you. If the genetic potential for believers should be to where we're conformed into the image of Jesus Christ, in other words, that we look like act like, think like Jesus, because that's our genetic potential that's before us. And I say that picture is the only thing that we should be going after. Everything else will work out if we're going after that, because the word disciple, as we've sort of discussed maybe over the last three months in some degrees or another, today disciple doesn't mean the same of what it used to. Disciple for the typical person today has the idea of, oh, I'll listen to see what they have to say. So here's this group of guys on this particular subject that they want to study, and they go, I'll see what he has to say, and you know, I'll, I'll glean from that, and then I'll glean from this, and then I'll synthesize it into what I think works for me. That's the typical idea that we have today. But when it comes to Christianity, that might work when it comes to investing. That might work when it comes to whatever. 
But when it comes to this thing of called being a believer, that doesn't work. We, we, we don't approach Christ and say, well, I'll hear what he has to say. And then, you know, I'll be, be kind of, you know, I'll, 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 I'll study and see what I, and then we listen to people that confirm what we already believe. Are you with me? And then we arrive at our belief system and God, I just, God, I'm not saying that sarcastically. And, and, and God, just as long as it kind of fits within my lifestyle, don't make me too uncomfortable. But a disciple during the time of Christ, when Paul signed up to be a disciple, who was Paul a disciple of, by the way? Uh, top five, at least the, the theologians tell us that one of the top five uh, rabbis of the day. What was his name? Anybody have an idea? Gamaliel, right? When Paul signed up to be Gamaliel, here's what Paul didn't sign up for. Well, I'll see what he has to say. Because each rabbi, you know, during the time frame, each rabbi would take on, oddly enough, only 12 people, right? Because 12 was the number that seemed to be perfect. So that any more than that, you lose the sense of what it means. When Paul signed up to be a disciple of Gamaliel, let me tell you what. What he didn't sign up to do is to say, well, I'll hear what Gamaliel has to say. And then, you know, it may or may not. When Paul signed up to be a disciple of Gamaliel, Paul's goal was, I want to act like him. I want to think like him. And I want to believe everything that he believes. I shared that Gandhi uh, spent time in Great Britain looking for the right religion and the right, right spiritual guidance that he wanted to formulate his life after. And he ended up saying, as, as you heard me quote last week, he ended up saying, you know what? <clears throat> if Christians believed and acted out the teachings of Jesus, 100% the whole world would be Christian. But they don't. Sadly, the people during the time frame that he was exposed to, they would have, if you were to ask them, are you living it out? They would have said, yeah, right? And so this, this thing that I wanna challenge us with this year is let's take a look at what nobody else sees. So, so I can't climb into your life and go into the areas that nobody sees, but you can. And if I were to ask the question, how are we doing at reaching our genetic potential in God? How would you answer that? And only each of us could answer that differently. I think we would all agree that, that there's a lot of growth that could happen. Would you agree with that? So that whatever it needs to be, what, what, whatever those things, and you know, a plant is, is complicated but simple in a lot of ways. The thing is, is a plant's going to grow. In good or bad soil, a plant's going to grow. The difference is, will it reach its potential or not? Based upon where it's at. And every man, woman, boy, and girl that's ever been born, that's alive now or will ever be born, is formed. Everybody say formed. So these are two words that I'm going to spend time on over the next, this week and next week, is, is the word called formation and a word called Transformation. So what I mean by that is all of us in here, before you became a Christian or after you became a Christian or whatever, we were formed. We were formed by our environment, people that were around us, deposits that were made into our heart, things that we got just by osmosis, things that we could never articulate, things that happened in our life do what's called forms us. It forms us into the person that we are right now. Amen? So where you are today, I know that you know, some would say where you are today is because of every decision you've ever made. Okay, that's, that's true, but that's really pretty anemic. That's, that's a pretty thin idea because of the decisions that you made, you made those decisions based upon how you were formed. And how you were formed is what caused you to make the decisions that you make. Are you with me? Does that make sense so far? Are you tracking with me? Ask your neighbor if they're tracking. Okay. <laughs> Some of you are saying no, no. It's like, oh, brother. All right, let's start back at A. Um, 
when we come to Christ, something happens. Some, something happens that's so incredible. Now, all of a sudden, when we come to Christ, we get translated. We get translated from the kingdom of what? Darkness. We get translated into the kingdom of light. Does that remove all of the formation up to that moment in our life? It does not at all. Things that happened in our life caused us to come to a place of of the reason we look at things the way we look at things is because how we were formed, right? And the kicker is God wants us to be completely transformed. So I say this, formation leads to transformation. And so the question comes that I want us to just think about. Are we doing things, living in such a way that the formation that's taking place, because we can't kid ourselves, every day we're being formed, every day, by what we allow to enter our life. In the book of Proverbs chapter 4, it says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. During the beginning of the computer era, there was a phrase that if I started, I bet you can finish it. Garbage in? Why? The computer doesn't, isn't smart. The computer doesn't filter. If we put in garbage, garbage comes out. Right? They're real simple. So our question that I want to just at least today then comes down to intention. So that's the second. Vision first. The vision that God has for every one of his kids is for us to be transformed into the image of his dear son, Jesus Christ. So that when people look at our alfalfa plant, it looks like an alfalfa plant. Smells like one. I don't know if you've ever eaten alfalfa, but when you, when you chomp on an alfalfa stem, young stem, it's sweet. Actually doesn't taste bad at all. That we look like, taste like, and, and that it's like, yep, that looks exactly, it's reached its genetic potential in all ways. So now you can understand that what I'm talking about is lifelong as a Christian. I'm not going to reach my genetic potential tomorrow. Man, wouldn't that be wonderful if we could? Wouldn't it just be wonderful if when we signed on to become a Christian, I I wouldn't care if we'd have to wait wait a week or two. It's like, we're going to get the packet in the mail, and that packet in the mail is going to have a new operating system. And that operating system, I don't care if it takes a week to download. Doesn't matter to me. Wouldn't it be wonderful to just plug it in at night and it's like, all right, knock me out for a week. I don't care. But when I wake up, wouldn't it be wonderful to have been conformed to the image of his son to where I act like, talk like, smell like, react like Jesus? Yeah, that's fantasy land. The next point of transformation renovation, however you want to look at it, Uh, renewal, maybe, is intention. Everybody say intention. Okay, If, if the genetic potential for a believer is for us to be conformed into the image of his son, if that's what our purpose in life is, and I say that is what it is, okay, then what's my intention? Am I going to go after it? Or am I just going to plant the same variety of corn in my field and change none of my farming practices and then bellyache and moan when I have even less yield? Right? Because if I do, how many of you know that we would look at each other after a while and go, dude, wake up and smell the coffee. Are you, are you pleased with your yield? No. Did you plant the same variety? Well, yeah. Did you do anything different? No. 
Well, then shut up. It's like, it's real simple. But you know, that happens with Christians all the time. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's not talking about you. He's talking about the guy on the other side of you. We want, we want the genetic potential to be real. What we don't want is whatever it's going to take to make it happen. Because what it's going to take is sacrifice. We, we looked at the story of Nehemiah when the children of Israel were, were, were undertaking a transformation process of the wall. Sanballat looked at him and said, what do these feeble Jews think they're going to do? Do they think they're really going to do this? In their shape, are they going to do this? The answer was no. So then he gave the, actually the solution. He says, okay, for them to do it, they're going to have to fortify themselves. In other words, they're going to have to now start getting into a mode that this is necessary. And then they're going to have to sacrifice. So I'm just going to tell you point blank. What I'm asking us as a body of believers and encouraging us, inspiring us, challenging us, however you want to say it, I'm just going to tell you point blank. It's not just going to be easy. But it is doable. Sacrifice will be involved. Amen? So for some, it might mean minor adjustments. For some of us, it might mean major overhaul. The kicker is, is we don't have to do it tomorrow. Because the fact is, is we can't finish it tomorrow. We're going to spend our lifetime doing it. So let's, let's develop a, an intentional strategy. So we have to ask ourselves, and these are just bullet points to just get you to think on, and we'll, we'll interweave throughout these. So the vision is important to get clear in our head. If you want to be like Jesus, you can be. If you think that's worthy of, of your life's effort, it's doable. All the resources are doable. So let's get that clear in our brain. And I, I say this, if that's not, if, 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 if Jesus in your life or anybody's life is simply to make them better, then I say we've got it all wrong. My goal isn't to serve Jesus so that he can make me better. My goal is to serve Jesus so that I can look like him, think like him, act like him. In doing so, what, what do we know? We do know that is, our life is going to be better. But I think when we put the intention, if our intention is to just have a better life, I think we might maybe not even su be successful with that. Amen? Intent is really important. So our intention, our intention is one of those things, it's more than just, boy, I'd really like to. I mean, I'd, I'd, I, I've, I've embarked on learning a language, an, an ancient biblical language, and I'm just going to tell you something. It ain't easy. I just don't understand. I mean, if I can speak in tongues, why can't I just speak in Greek? But guess what? I try to spend. Greek isn't what I'm learning, but uh, I try to spend 10 to 20 minutes, just, just a little bit, every day. Just every day. Every day. Just, just try. Every day. I can greet you in the language. About it. <laughs> I'm a little further than that. But all I'm saying is, every day. Well, I just don't understand. If, 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 if I want to, it's like, uh, it's like, when it comes to our genetic potential in God of being conformed in the image of his son, Jesus Christ, can we spend time every day getting there? And I'll say this, if we don't, we won't. We just won't. We'll just know enough to be confused. And we'll actually just know enough to confuse others. 
so that when the world looks at us as believers, they really do question, do you really believe the teachings of Jesus? And are you his disciple or aren't you? Amen? Okay. So vision. Intent. What's our intent? The third one today is where we're going to start. <laughs> is the means. What means are we going to employ to get there? Using the analogy of a farmer, if that's the genetic potential that this plant that I'm wanting to plant has, what means, what's my intention? Well, my intention is to reach that 200 bushel an acre yield. Okay, great. This year I got 100, let's say, all right? Now, what's the means that I'm going to employ? So now I can just fall back and go, well, I've been farming for years. There ain't anything I need to learn. You just get on the tractor and go. You stick her in the ground and water it. You're good. Yeah, something will grow, but it won't be what you want. More importantly, it won't be fair to the plant. I just wonder sometimes if us as Christians, if the only thing that we paint to the world that this is who Jesus is, Man, I think sometimes we just need to apologize to Jesus and say sorry. The picture that we gave them of who you are is not even close. Amen? But then it's like, okay, if I'm going to be a serious farmer to reach there, it's like, okay, how about if, I, how about if we just worked hard to gain 10%? Okay, what is that? Oh, it's like I might need to go spend some money and get a soil test. There's a thought. Find out what we're up against and then start looking at, you know, whatever. When I, when I did that, that foo-foo green, huh. you know, the first thing I did within, within a week after me getting done crying, I went to some people that knew how to grow grain differently than I did. As soon as they, the first thing they asked, they said, how much did you water? As soon as I told them, they went, no, you didn't do that. And it's like, yep. <laughs> okay. The very next year, I didn't grow the same thing. I grew a different foo-foo grain. <laughs> Maybe foo-foo is the common thread. Now, <clears throat> and guess what? I took their advice and watered it differently. Wow. We weren't far from the genetic potential of that grain. Still have a ways to go, because guess what? We hold this treasure in an earthen vessel, so we're not going to do it perfectly. The issue is, are we engaged to the point that we're going to give ourselves? We're going to give ourselves. So you, you might have to study. You, there, there might have to be. So what means are you going to utilize to get there? So the first one we're going to talk about, write down if you're taking notes, thoughts. Everybody say thoughts. Now, be before you jump and go, oh, yeah, I got it. We've we got to renew our mind. It's like, okay, yeah, but let me, let, me, let me orb out what thoughts are. Thoughts aren't just conscious stuff that goes through your brain. Thoughts are broken down into four areas. An idea. Ideas are important, and, and wherever you are in life, you have ideas, I just, if I were to ask you about, tell me what your idea about sin is. You would tell me what your idea is. It, it could be way deep. It could be way simple. It could be way whatever, but you have an idea about it. You have an idea about politics, probably. This is what I mean by ideas. They're broad stuff that when you really look at it, there's a whole bunch of little things that have come to form that idea. Images are the next thing. How many of you know pictures are important? Now, when you think of pictures, I'm not just thinking about the, you know, however many thousands of selfies. I'm not thinking about necessarily that picture, but I'm talking about Im images are important. You've, you've seen things, you've watched things, you've, you've come across things in life. My wife and I, on driving to church this morning, there's an area that we drive by and she almost always talks about it. She came upon an accident that happened right in front of her. She stopped the car, jumped out, went over to the person, and the person ended up dying. 26 years old. 
That's an image that she has seen. And guess what? Probably till the day she dies, when she drives down that spot, guess what? She's going to see that image. And so there's different things that create an image. Uh, I shared last week that the further we get away from a transformative event by time or by purpose, the less power that that event has to change us. America in in 9-11. How many of you know America went through a change the next day? Churches were filled the next day. And and for about the next four months, churches didn't have enough space to house people. Why? Because an image happened that threatened something, that caught, that drove people somewhere. And in that driving them to somewhere safe or a church or whatever it may be. And, and how many of you know, Democrat and Republican didn't matter the next few months. Right? It, it, it didn't matter which side of the aisle you were on politically. America, the, the idea of what America means has been attacked. And guess what? America was more united. But let me just ask you a question. How long has it lasted? Yeah. Literally, I think within eight months, churches went back to exactly where they were. Not much happened, a whole lot at all. And how many of you know it wasn't very long and the other side of the aisle got elected into power? So obviously, now division meant something. The further we get away from the event, the less power it has to transform us. Listen, unless we do something. And I say, the time that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ, for me, it was when I was a little kid. I was six years old. Okay, was there a lot of transformation that took place? Sure. However, however bad a six-year-old can be, right? But nonetheless, I was dead in my trespasses and sins until I asked Jesus to be the Lord of my life. So my life was transformed. Here I am, you know, 30 years later, 56 years later, here I am, and I have to ask myself, did that event, now is it so yawn that its transformative power has little to do with me anymore. And I'll say this, that's exactly how it would be if I wouldn't change something. And here's the thing that in this formation and transformational process, human beings are the only group of living creatures that have the ability to make a decision about it. And so I can choose and you can choose to say, hey, When I got translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, that process is still going to take place because I'm going to bless God, I'm going to reach my genetic potential. Do you know what I mean? And I can look at it every day and go, hey, wait a minute, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you getting closer? And so that's my question for us. So so let me finish the four things of, of thought. Ideas, images. The next thing is pretty simple. It's information. In fact, of the four things, the first two are the most powerful, by far, ideas and images. But information, information is information, it's just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Water is made up out of what? Hydrogen and oxygen, more specifically, how many atoms of, of hydrogen? Two mixed with one of oxygen, okay, that's a fact, that doesn't get interpreted, it's not emotive, it's not open for... For your interpretation, well, that's what you believe. It's like, okay, it's, it's facts, right? Water is wet, right? Snow is frozen. Ice is hard. Facts. So for the believer, that, that ought to be, a, for those of you who are thinking way ahead because you're so brilliant, how many of you know information is an important thing for a believer because when you came to Christ, you came with a set of information that may or may not be correct? Are you with me? And especially when it comes to life issues, I can assure you the information we came with to Christ 
now needs to be different because in Christ, the information is different. All right? The last one is this then simply the ability to synthesize, the ability to actually think, to take these ideas and formulate a worldview and all sorts of stuff. But to change that, and I'm just going to tell you, we have to change that. It is called transform, transformation by the renewing of the mind. But it's much different than just saying, you need to think different. How many of you know if somebody tells you, if I were to tell Robert, now don't you think about, he's a Cincinnati Bengals. Are you still a Cincinnati Bengals fan? And you owe me an ice cream cone, don't you? <laughs> Sorry. He owes me an, an ice cream cone because his team lost. But anyhow, that's neither here nor now, Robert, I don't want you to think about the Cincinnati Bengals at all. Okay? Don't think about them. Don't think about their orange, ugly uniform. Okay? Now, if I was instantly to try to engage him, what do you want to bet he's thinking about Cincinnati Bengals? Right? So for, for somebody to stand up and say, you just need to think different, I would encourage you to just, when somebody tells you that, just look at him and go, duh. Really? How do we think different? That's the issue. What, what, what is involved in that makes up an idea? What, what, what is that? And then can we look deep enough into our life to go, why did I arrive at that idea? Why did I arrive at that? Why do I believe it that way? Whatever it may be, there's a reason. So what I'm not talking about is I'm not talking, go back, I'm not talking about going deeply into your inner child. I'm not talking about that, but I'm just talking to say, listen, let, let's, if we want our root system to be robust so that it can produce the genetic potential that's before us, then we better look deeply at our lives. So what I'm not also talking about, to just maybe flesh it out further, I'm not talking about this year spend just on yourself. God knows we don't need that. But I say this, the deeper we grow in God, the more we'll be able to engage and actually touch and love people better, right? If at the end of this, we're not more effective at reaching people with the love of God, then we're going about it all wrong. Because if I'm going to act like, talk like, walk like, you know, blah, 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 Jesus, that's going to compel me to touch people. It's going to compel me to change people. Or, or to be used of God to maybe be, to bring change to people, whatever it may be. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issue of life. Paul said it a different way. Paul said, whatsoever things are just and kind and all that, didn't he say to think on these things? I'm just trying to talk about and give you some maybe scripture to just help found, found, put a foundation for you. In the book of Mark... We'll, we'll just, I'll start wrapping this up. From, from the book of Mark chapter 7 down to about verse 23, I'll just bring it up to snuff. <clears throat> at the beginning of it, the Pharisees got mad at Jesus and said, your disciples, I, I, you, your disciples don't eat clean. They don't wash themselves properly and they don't pay attention to the traditions that is established to be able to eat cleanly. And um, Jesus then responds back and says, well, it's not what goes in you that defiles you. Um, it's just really important to, to dissect the context of what he's saying. So what he says then, he goes on to say, because what goes in you goes into your stomach and then it gets deposited to the sewer. He literally says that. It gets deposited to the sewer. So it's not what goes in you that defiles you. It's what comes out of you. Then he made the transition, he says, because it's what's in the heart. It's what comes out of you where your heart is formed. We would put that today in, in, in phrases of it's what you've been formed with. It's, it's what is forming you that is causing you to be the way you are. And I'll say this, all of us in here, we've been formed by life. We just need to ask ourselves a question is what, and this is what I'm going to leave you with, is if I could say a homework or whatever, but to start asking yourself, what am I allowing into my life that's forming me? That could be a ton of different things. 
could be what we listen to. Are you with me? I mean, if you know what we hear, what we hear is really important. We may not think it is, but it is, right? If, so, so nobody take offense to the genre of music that I'm talking about. If I was to listen, I, I grew up in the, you know, 70, if I was to listen to then the country music of the day or the rock and roll of the day, and I had a healthy dose of that all day, do you think that would be forming me? The answer is, as it would be forming me. Would it be forming me closer to my growing into the image of Christ? Or would it be forming me in a, in a way that wouldn't be propelling me closer to God? Right? Because I might look down that bar, as the country song would say, I might look down that bar. And I might start talking to somebody else and going, yeah, my wife too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then guess what? It opened up the door for me to start thinking about some of the things that all the songs talk about. Right? When you play a country and western song backwards, what do you get? You get your wife back. You get your car back. You get your job back. You get whatever back. Right? So thing, it could be something that's, I'm just throwing out stuff. It could be something, are we listening to stuff that's wholesome, that gets me further? That's one of the reasons I'll just tell you, for us as, as Christians to, 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 to maybe observe a Christian calendar. We can, we can observe secular or we can observe Christian. I just say observing Christian puts us further down the road. Gives us a greater opportunity to keep our mind on God. Amen? It's, it's, not, it's not a magic bullet. It isn't the end all, but I'll just say what? If we're going to just think about things, if we're going to mark time, I'd rather mark time in a way that, that propels me further to thinking about the things of God than that are either quesera, sera, or just whatever. What are we watching? It's interesting. I shared this with the first service, so I'll be vulnerable with anybody who watched a show called Gold Rush. Whatever. So, you know, I'm kind of a hands-on guy, big machinery, whatever. It's like, yeah, let's see, you know. I'm, I'm not a guy that's, you know, would ever like to go do that. But it'd be fun to sit on some of those bulldozers that they have. But I don't watch, a, I don't watch it all the time. But I told the Lord this year, I said, you know, because I, I, from, from Thanksgiving on, I just get, you know, kind of introspective with the Lord of God, what's before us for the year and blah, blah, blah. And for me, just Lynn, not Pastor Lynn, just Lynn. And I told the Lord, I said, Father, I want my root system to grow, grow deeper as well. This is what I've, I think you're sensing for us. So Father, I just, I just, you know, so for me, God, I just want you to know if there's anything, I, I'm going to pay attention to what I allow into my life because it's forming me. It is on m one way or another. And so I, I, I just said, so Lord, I just want you to know I'm in. I, I'll do whatever. And I honestly think humorously that maybe God looked over, over at Jesus on his right hand and go, all right, we'll just see how serious he is about this. So I'm watching a gold rush show. And, and, and typically I'm doing stuff on my computer and it's just in the background. And I just really felt like I heard the Holy Spirit say, turn the TV off. I could, have, I, I could have said, well, it's not simple. Besides that, I'm praying for him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not sinful. There's some things in life that aren't sinful, but they are a weight, maybe. And only the Holy Spirit can determine for you what may be a weight. Sin, he'll let you know. Front and center, wrong, stop it. Weights are other things. Hebrews, let's lay aside the sin and the weight which so easily besets. So I honestly think, I don't know, um, I honestly think maybe God just thought, okay, we'll just see how serious you are, Bubba. So shut the TV off. So I gladly shut it off. Not saying that to say praise me. I'm just saying, how intentional do we want to be to pay attention to our root system? Now, could I look at and go that, man, the episodes of Gold Rush that I've ever seen has destroyed me? 
No. But I don't care about past. I just care about future. I want to reach my genetic potential in God, to use that analogy. I want to be conformed into the image of his son. So listen, nobody think, oh, brother, this is going to be a boring life. Oh, I, think, I, I think that journey becomes the most exciting thing possible. I really do. Because God will, God will use us to, to, to be a part of things that are just incredible. So pay attention to our thought life. We're going to delve deeper into it. But ideas, images, information, and then the ability to synthesize, to think it through. So with that, let's bow our head and close our eyes this morning. If you're here today and you've never even started a journey, first part is becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. That happens by becoming a Christian. If you've never done that, if you've never on purpose surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, oh, I'm going to tell you what, the start of an incredible journey. What's cool about that is coming to Christ as he does something that nobody can do. He, he, he causes you to be made brand new. From that point on, he then comes alongside us and, and helps us enter the process of full transformation. So if you've never become a Christian before, I encourage you to maybe make that decision today. Secondly, if you're maybe here and maybe you'd say, you know, I've, I'm not in a spot where, where I'm really engaged with God. Maybe you haven't turned your back on God or maybe you have. Maybe you're in a backslidden condition and I would say, I encourage you to, to change that. You might be in a spot that you just go, man, I've just been living, I've just been living day in and day out and really haven't paid attention to anything. And therefore, you know, we're not gonna naturally gravitate towards passion in the Lord and today you would just say you know I want to recommit my life to Christ and for anybody that may be watching on screen I want to speak to you that if you're if you're in that spot just pretend that you're here with us in the service so that you too can can make it make a change in your life I'm going to ask that we bow our head and close our eyes and I'll just tell you I want to give you an opportunity to raise your hand and I continually get asked why why the raising of the hand good question. Um, There's nothing magical in the raising of the hand at all, but the reason I ask for a response is, is I think sometimes we can be stirred, but we never go further and, and, and maybe take a step to say, I want this enough that I'm willing to stretch myself. And it may be uncomfortable for you to raise your hand, and I don't apologize for that just think it'd be a good thing. What, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to single you out, anything like that. In fact, after people, you know, either respond or whatever, we're going to stand and I'm going to lead us all in a prayer. So with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, is there anyone here this morning, you would raise your hand and say, I'm not a Christian and I want to be, or you would say, you know what? I want to recommit my life to Christ and I want to re-engage with God and, and, and and get, get on with following God passionately. Anybody at all? I see a hand back there. Anybody else by raising your hand? I see one there. I see one there. Thank you. Any, I see one there. Anybody else? And if there's anybody on uh, screen, I just encourage you to stick with us for a moment. All right. Let's all stand up. I want to lead us in a prayer. And just give me a moment to talk about two groups. If you're in the group that you raised your hand to to come to Christ or to rededicate your life, we're going to pray, and I tell you, God's going to meet you there. The second group is probably the majority, right, that we didn't raise our hand, but I I, want to just encourage us. We're getting ready. In fact, you'll see people coming up soon to get ready to pass out communion. We're getting ready to come to the table of the Lord, and that, that is one of the most special things that the body of Christ ever does. I just want to encourage you. Paul said to let a man examine himself and then let him eat. I just want to encourage us in this time of prayer. Let's take where we are, that second group of people, that, that, that ones that didn't raise their hand. To, you're already born again. You're already walking with God. But maybe there's something in your heart 
that you just need to bring before the Lord. I encourage you. Let's do that. The, the assurance that I'm so thankful for is when we can, if it's sin, when we confess our sins, how many of you know, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that when we come to the table, we come totally clear. Not totally perfect, but totally clear. Does that make sense? So let me lead us in this prayer. I'll pray and you repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I need you. Would you come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and be my Lord and Savior. I want to follow you and bring honor and glory to you. And I want you to be my Lord. In fact, I say this. Jesus, you are my Lord and Savior. Thank you for loving me, for forgiving me, and accepting me into your family. And I want to walk with you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.